Live Hope and Planet Glees join forces to change the world. Live Hope is supporting communities globally, including the indigenous tribes from New Zealand, Australia, Africa, Asia, South America, and the Native Americans. The pandemic worsened their situation, and Live Hope is helping with food, supplies, and medical necessities. Your contribution is fundamental for their survival. Please donate now to www.livehopefestival.com. While Planet Glees is supporting healthcare workers on the front line worldwide with their necessary protective gear. Your contribution will protect our heroes, doctors and nurses from around the world to stay safe and keeping fighting COVID-19. Please donate now to www.planetglees.com. The only way we are going to get through this is thinking as we and acting as one. I'm joined today by, by Ryan Jenkins from London, top international choreographer. Hi. Hello. <laughs> How are you, darling? I'm doing fantastic. And we're here in London. I think the whole world is just coming together. And thank God we have the internet so we can do projects like this to talk help and nurture everybody and I think we're all just having to adapt and survive in a situation and move forward and it, it is what it is and all you can do is try to make the best out of a situation. Tell me a bit more uh, how is the situation in London right now? So London's obviously every country is so different at the moment and uh, there's been a funny thing with go to work don't go to work go indoors, don't go indoors. And I think it's all still a little bit up in the air what's happening. But we're at the moment with the UK, the government are starting to relinquish control of us being indoors and we're allowed to have a little bit more freedom. So it'll be interesting to see how much freedom everybody takes and whether there's going to be a second wave of COVID-19 everywhere. And I really hope and pray because what I am doing personally is I really do not leave my home. I sit indoors and I go to the shops to buy some food and I'm not socialising. And I hope that everybody out there is doing the same and be, being precautious and just really thinking of the bigger picture. Because the, the last thing we want to happen, guys, is this to happen twice. How did your life change since the pandemic? So... I would say I was already working online a lot with dance education and I look I remember I was an original flash mobber so I did the T-Mobile original flash mob and it was directed by the guy who Derek Michael who directed The Greatest Showman the movie and when we learned that we learned that through like a YouTube video and I think a lot of stuff has been pushed online and especially with dance I think with businesses that's what's been interesting is can people work from home people with children and childcare. And we do have the internet and there's so much today with apps and different tools that it has worked well in a way. And I think, it, I think the world will change slightly after this. And we hopefully won't be traveling as much to waste things like fossil fuels. And hopefully it will, the planet's healing, which is what I'm really hoping at the moment is that by being indoors, we are healing our planet. We are very honored to have you with us today because you are a superstar. <laughs> and uh, let's talk a bit about your career because you started as a dancer in the West End. And then what happened? Tell us a bit so, more. Well, I, I started dancing really late at the age of 14 and went to a place called Bird College Conservatoire. And then my first job was Matthew Bourne's Swan Lake. And I was uh, known a little bit as a little Billy Elliot. Uh, as you think, I hadn't started dancing till a late age. And to start from 14 and to enter Matthew Bourne's Swan Lake, which is the most award-winning, biggest show in the world to date. And we traveled the world and I was lucky to dance with Marguerite Porter, who was with the principal of the Royal Ballet of Nureyev, and Jesus Pasteur, Adam Cooper. And it was a phenomenal experience to be put into that world. And we got to dance with the Japanese royal family. We went to South Korea. I even went under the border to North Korea, but I was underground, just to make that clear. Uh, <laughs> but that was wonderful. And then I managed to do loads of other shows. But for my first show, to say to do something so iconic in your career, it was really hard to 
surpassed that. So my level of achievement of what I always wanted was high. I also heard that you were nominated for three Oscars. Well, not personally. <laughs> uh, I am in a three-time Oscar-nominated movie, which was directed by Joel Schumacher, choreographed by Peter Darling, and it's Phantom of the Opera. And uh, yeah, so I'm part of the team that was nominated. So it's a weird thing for my brain to go, I'm not personally, but I am in a way, like I'm involved in something. I'm, I was involved in a project that is Oscar nominated, which is, and it was my first Hollywood movie. So to have that is, it's like one of those boxes you tick and go, wow, what's the next? Um, am I going to win one? <laughs> And I also know that you collaborate with TV shows, with BBC and companies. Tell me more. So, yeah, I work with Simon Cowell and I used to work on Britain's Got Talent, which obviously in America is America's Got Talent. And my job is to find the talent in the UK and try to find the right acts and take them into the producers. And I also work on a TV show. We just had Todrick Hall, which everybody loves Todrick. And he was here in the UK working on the new show, the second season. And my job was to work on that as well. I work for Lifetime TV. So I'm friends with Abby Lee Miller and I'm the choreographer for the UK season so for Dance Mums. Nice. And you also represented England in Milan. I did. So each year, there, are eight, every four years, like the Olympics, there's something called Expo. And it's bringing together the governments of the world about world healing, economy, health, and the last one we had was in Milan and I was asked to represent the UK basically for National Day. And I had to go into the UK government and we were working with the prime minister and I had a whole team of people. About 20 people were sat at the table each day discussing themes and ideas. And I had to create a show that went to Milan and they performed for a week. And then I did um, a fashion show for Paul Smith in the Apora Armani tent, and that was for the ambassador to Italy and the Lord of... It was, it was one of those iconic moments to say that I was asked to represent my country and showcase it to the world. So very, very proud. What a glamorous life. <laughs> <laughs> I try. <laughs> So, and you also work with the royal family. You know, here in America, everybody goes crazy for the royal family. I've done a few things for the royal family, yes. Um, I was commissioned to do my own photo shoot for my own company at Hillsborough Castle in Ireland. And then I have done choreography at St. James's Palace for the royal family. And then Prince Andrew also came to one of my productions, which I did with a friend of mine, um, Anthula Papadakis and uh, Vernon uh, Mound. And yeah, that came and we had a conversation. And it's very weird to go into the royal residence and actually work for them and learn the protocols and again it's just one of those amazing honors to know that you've been asked to go and do something for the family that represents the united kingdom tell me a bit the protocol what people have to do when they meet the royal family well what's the big one is it mom or ma'am when you meet the queen Yes, what's the protocol? Like, what did you have to learn? Well, I never got to meet the Queen, but uh, there's just a few do's and don'ts um, of, obviously you don't put your hand out to shake anybody from the royal family unless they offer it. You don't really speak unless you're spoken to, because when you think they're very, very, very busy, and when they're standing and there's a, you've got all the crowds and audiences stood there, and there's hundreds of people, I normally ask you like to wait, and if they would like to have a chat with you, they would but they can't chat to everyone because the whole evening would go mad and things like you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to take your phones in sometimes and you're not allowed to take pictures because you have to remember that the Windsor family is a family and they're a working family in the public eye and they do it every day. And so they just like to try to keep a bit of privacy and a bit of protection, well, quite a lot of protection around them. And the, everyone I've met for the Royal Family have been amazing. Do you have any behind the scenes story that you can share with us? You'll have to wait till the book. Ooh, tell me more. <laughs> I, had a, I had a few chats with people while I was out in Los Angeles where we met. And uh, there's a few chats about a few people wanting to do an autobiography on my life. And they, they just said, your life is like crazy nuts, mad. <laughs> so it's something to do down the lines. I don't think it'll be for a couple of years yet, but I'm really, I'm looking forward to 
not exposing some stuff, but just telling some telling some fun stories. You go, oh my god, did that really happen? You also collaborated with the British Airways, right? Yes. Yeah, so this year, was it this year? It was last year. So it was the 100 year centenary for British Airways. And I was asked to go in and be a choreographer for their celebration. And we were at Twickenham Stadium. It was utterly insane. They had all the staff were flown in all across the world. And we came up with a new iconic dance for them. They had new advertising and they've just spent billions of pounds rebranding the airline. So it, it was another honour to be asked to go and work with uh, one of the biggest airlines in the world. You also do an amazing wor work with young dancers. Yes. So I have, I, it was, so dance education, oh, you can feel my passion, is a massive thing for me. And in... There was no dance education I found a few years ago for contemporary, for children, of how to learn. And they're all watching dance mums jumping and flying on the floor. And I worked on something called a syllabi, a syllabus, where teachers would come and learn a technique and educate the children. And each year those children would enter an exam. So we started, well, I started something called ID Company, a teacher, an independent teacher training organization that is about nurturing the dancers of tomorrow. And we now have a street dance syllabus. And the work that we've created within the company is now taught all throughout Europe in Italy, Denmark, France, Spain. And we're about to come and launch it in America. And we also created with this a dance company called ID Company Dancers. And we had dancers flying from Denmark, Scotland, Ireland every week. And we just launched ID Company Online. Where we have, I even have dancers from Los Angeles, which are getting up at six o'clock in the morning to train with me oh. and, learn, and learn the Jenkins technique. So it's been a, a beautiful company to produce and what's most wonderful about it is it's bringing people together and created a dance family where everybody feels connected and accepted no matter of your age genre size ability that dance is for everybody and we all should have a space to learn in a safe environment this is such a beautiful message, bringing people together and use dance to connect and stay positive. We also have a video of you teaching that we want to share. Maybe you can comment on it and you can tell us more about your work with the young dancers. I would love to. Okay, let's see. And so it's the contemporary syllabus video that we're gonna, yes. what's just you were talking about. So this is a teacher training course that we offer and this is showing experts, excerpts of the teacher training course, just to give people an insight to how we do. We're actually doing a new teacher training course, which is of this online next weekend, the 24th, 23rd, 24th, 25th, uh, which people can apply for at www.id-company.com. And it's worthwhile. I was looking for something new and I really feel like I found it. I feel full of inspiration to take home to my dance school. I've just learned so much in so short an amount of time and I feel so inspired. I think we've been given the tools to allow the students to really enjoy it. Ryan is so inspirational. It really inspired me and I think I've grown a lot. Our syllabus includes many styles from Horton Technique, Cunningham, Graham. If you like contemporary dance, then this is for you. The dancers that have learned our syllabus have gone into the biggest contemporary companies in the world. Oh, that's lovely to watch. <laughs> Nice. Uh, big thank you to uh, Matt Wheatley from JH Media, who does all my filming and all my editing. So thank you, Matt. I love all the work that you do for the company. Give us some behind the scene of this um, company and what moves you to work with young dancers. I find so many young dancers just want to achieve. And 
things are changing. The world has changed a lot. When um, I was a finalist on So You Think You Can Dance, about 10 years ago now, I actually have my golden ticket here. <laughs> oh. when i did so you think you can dance it wasn't about acrobatics and it wasn't about turning and now it's starting to include all of this and with teaching it's about giving teachers the tools to learn to teach new techniques and that's what the company is about is about nurturing teachers so they can still facilitate dancers and with the use of the internet when i go back 10 years ago there was no Instagram, there was no TikTok. We was we went to a dance class and did ballet, jazz and tap. But now you've got to learn street dance, contemporary, acrobatics, stretching. So the company is about enthusing teachers with knowledge to empower them to be the best that they can be. And it's worldwide. We're, well, we're about to go worldwide. We're coming, we're doing a big launch in Los Angeles. I can't say too much, but we are doing a big red carpet event. We have a new app, which will be a bespoke app, which will be downloadable, the ID company from iTunes and Google Drive and the app stores, which will give teachers and dancers and parents full access to everything that we're doing. We'll be offering live classes on the app. And when I get back to Los Angeles after lockdown, I'm inviting all of my celebrity friends <laughs> and we are doing a rooftop red carpet event and we're going to go full out. Nice. I cannot wait for that. We have more videos uh, of you working and we would love you to comment on it while we're watching. Okay. Uh, also, um, you said you're doing this work in Los Angeles. What inspired you to go worldwide? I always, as a kid, wanted, I was always a dreamer, a child where I could never, and I always used to love movies like The Sounds of Music and the red carpets. And um, I used to like dressing up sometimes in my mum's heels. Um, <laughs> um, so I used to love that. And just coming to America was very, very exciting for me to be there and just really looking forward to it. Also, when people think of dancers, they always think so like female dancers. Did you find any challenges growing up as a, a male dancer? Is there any message that you can give to young boys that want to be dancers? I think when when I I think it's always going to be difficult for boys to dance because of the stigma that it can come across as girly, and it's with now I would say. There are a lot of straight, lot more straight guys doing ballet, jazz, and street dance has really helped because it's now become more. And it's, I think TikTok has helped definitely because everybody's dancing, and it's one of those. If you want something in life, you have to believe and achieve it, and you just have to try to block that negativity and protect yourself. So if there is something bad going on, you need to let somebody know and separate yourself from that situation and put yourself in the good light and focus on you, what you want to achieve and never let anybody tell you no. Nice, that's a very good advice for all the young teenagers watching. And we have our video ready, so I would With, love you uh, to comment. Ask, I, have, I have a video, I sent you a couple, but there's, um, I haven't released my new showreel yet. So I didn't no, no, it's not the showreel. Amazing, okay, just go. It's not the that's, showreel. That's coming soon, guys. It, it's the video <laughs> about the ID company. Okay, amazing. That's the company that you just, we're talking about and so we wanted yes. to show uh, a bit more fantastic yeah we're, we're looking forward to coming to america and doing a big this tour. is by far the best summer school i've been at of course ryan jenkins is a character the people here have really supported me definitely up there with one of the best summer school i don't think there's any other summer school in the country that has this quality of training it was very well organized tell us more about what this is about and how the idea came about I love working with Ryan. It's been so four years ago, I created an international in summer school, which we now have dancers that traveled from Israel, the Philippines, Singapore, Italy, France. And we bring in the best of the best people, working professional choreographers. And we give the children complete freedom at summer school to do whatever they want to do. 
and but when you get in class you work hard and then we do like fashion di- fashion lady gaga disco parties where <laughs> they dress up with tin foil then we did an all white party and each day we encourage the children to make friends and we also taught them things about how to take a good selfie how to do video editing how to take a picture because those are the skills as well as dancing children now need to learn how to promote themselves on social media so we made it all inclusive teaching everything and yeah they just so we, let's see, the let's, see more. Right. let's so see more how you'll correct okay. them and how it will be it will be positive and constructive but firm and what you know kind of what they need to hear i've loved being with ryan he's like a ball of energy to have around working with ryan jenkins is absolutely amazing his energy is just so contagious you can see that he does everything with the most amount of love and commitment it's been amazing to work with different choreographers i've made so many new friends the atmosphere here is just so friendly so supportive you meet so many new people I think all dancers around the world should come to this summer school. Ryan has got so many different people in from all different backgrounds, which is exactly what kids this age need. The environment at the ID Company Summer School was exactly what you would want from a summer school. The, kid, the younger kids all had chaperones. Everyone was ushered to and from the studios. And in terms of the range of practitioners that uh, Ryan knows and the ID Company has at its disposal, it's second to none. The choreographers that Ryan Jenkins is bringing in is just phenomenal. I would recommend this summer school because it's just such a lovely atmosphere here. It's really nice to be a part of. Things that you take for granted, there's the ballet bars there, the floor suits any different style of dance. It's one of the best, you know, national and international venues for a young dancer to come to. Yeah, I think it's very important that people should come to this. <laughs> I can work it double-handed. Work it. <laughs> oh, I love that. So work it because you're worth it. I've lost sound with you, darling. Can you hear me? I've got you. Yes. Yes. So tell me this motto, work it, where it's coming from. You know, work it. We, I, I can't, it divides with so many different things. It used to be. <laughs> Boom, bam, chicka pa, work. Um, but it got a bit marked, and then we made it into just the work it. And the kids love it. I'm always being tagged every day in babies, grandmas, and I've got grandma doing work it. Uh, it's the most <laughs> adorable thing. And what's lovely about it is it gives something that I can connect with my fans about and something that we can always do together and something that we have in connection. Lovely. And you mentioned TikTok before, and we have several we had several kids coming live to our shows to be interviewed and they all did TikTok dances and i know we are about to launch something together a competition we are so we're going to launch together uh we're going to put together a TikTok dance put together a professional music video and you guys get to reply so through planet Glees, we're going to put together a special TikTok, which is charity fundraising and we're going to ask you in the next week or so once we put it all together to send your videos in and you will get to join me and the id company dances in an exclusive video which is going to go worldwide and we're doing this to help doctors and nurses worldwide let's remind everyone why we're doing all this beautiful entertaining and these interviews uh and why we're live every day we are here to help support the doctors and nurses and everybody else that is working behind the scenes. And it's crucial that they do get the support that they need because if without them, we don't have anything and they are at the front line of everything. And it's a worldwide campaign. This isn't specific to one country because there are doctors and nurses flying from different countries, helping to build vaccines. And that's the big one. And it's getting the medical community to get the support they need to provide the treatment for us. So we remind everyone where they can donate to the website. Yes. Do you want to give that a shout out? So at Planet yes. Glee, I'll let you do. 
So everyone, they can go on our website, www.planetglees.com, where you can donate any amount, even $1 is enough. Any, any amount makes a difference. And also uh, livehopefestival.com because we're helping all the natives around the world to receive medical supplies, supplies, food, everything that they need. We had connection with people. And also when you donate to Planet Glees $100 or more, you can get a free t-shirt or a mask or a baseball cap. So it's our way to say thank you to people donating and taking part of our initiative. What do you think, Ryan? Love it. I want a T-shirt. <laughs> Love that. I just think it's amazing what you guys have put together to help support other people. And it's amazing that you can get something as well to be proud of, like a t-shirt or a mask that, you, that is practical and you can use and show everyone you have done something to make a difference. We want to create this global tribe where everyone is positive, is aware and wants to change and help the world, the environment and the people around. So just not just the doctors, but all the communities to like create a new way of living that it's positive. Yes. And you're doing that. We are we are living and breathing it. And talking about positivity, you're always so full of energy and positivity. Is is because you're dancing all day long? Tell us what's your secret to stay with that energy. Uh, my father used to call me Joey after a baby kangaroo. Uh, I was I just didn't sleep. I was I was always so full of energy as a child to the point when nobody would babysit me. And they just found like his brain just doesn't shut down. And I'm very much a multitasker. I can do a lot of things at the same time. I literally will be choreographing and then having a conversation about costume and lighting. And I can just flip and change. I can focus and analyze what I'm doing on with work very, very fast which is why a lot of brands and companies I feel like to work with me. And they always go when I walk in, they're like, Ryan's here. Everyone calm. It's fine now. He's here. And I go, <laughs> what's the problem? And I go, and they just reel it off. And I just go, boom, boom, boom. And I fix everything. And that's what, that's a thing that my brain can do. So, yeah. Uh, but the problem is I have problems shutting it down myself. <laughs> <laughs> And talking about you being, you're so well-rounded, you're a dancer, choreographer, director, you work with companies, you do commercials. Uh, I don't know what to say, like you do so much. I also know that you're launching an app to keep inspiring. Yeah, you were saying earlier. Yeah, so I'm so excited about the app, about bringing uh, Jenkins technique for the contemporary and the street dance to people. A lot of the moment, there are videos of just choreography, and there's choreography everywhere. Choreography doesn't mean anything unless you have your basic technique and improvisation skills and performance skills. So this app will be revolutionary for the world, and it will be the first time that children, as well as teachers, will be able to access set choreography, set exercises, which are broken down, in a one-to-one -one lesson. And rather than just telling you the moves in the actual video, we go through how to break down the techniques, how to make it correct. And it includes everything from my whole experience as a dancer. We're, we're giving it to you. And that's what's most amazing. How are things gonna change? And I, I see dancers today who have learned under ID Company and they always get the jobs. They're always the favorite for the choreographers because we give so much extra information. It's never just about the moves. It's about all the stuff they don't tell you to do. Well, guess what? I'm going to tell you. <laughs> we have so many young kids and teenagers watching our show and coming live to our show. What, there's there any advice you want to give it to them uh, for this pandemic and what can they do to stay positive, to change the world and how to use dance? I think it's finding your inspirations and things that you need to do each week. So writing a weekly list of 
what have I always wanted to do? I've always wanted to read that book. Then you need to allocate time to read it. If you want to learn something new, do it. And each week have a set task like you normally would do. Today I'm going to play tennis, then I've got a dinner, then I'm going to the cinema. Why not have a list for at home that keeps you occupied and keeps you busy? And then if you're feeling down, you've got to talk about it. You've got to call up your friends. But stay active, stay positive. And now is the time to focus on yourselves and do all the things that you never wish you'd never could do and do them online. Is there anything new that you've been doing now that you have more time at home? Yes. For myself, no, I'm busy getting this app ready. <laughs> uh, I'm busy doing the app. Uh, we have a new music video coming out to, we're working, we're doing the, with the song Blinding Lights with the ID company Online Dancers, which we're very excited for. And a lot of charity, a lot of free, I'm working with Capizio Dancewear, doing a lot of free classes with them. And it's just dispersing my time with all the different things. And for me, normally I don't stop. I'm normally exhausted. So I'm trying to get the balance of try not to do too much online, right? And you need to watch a bit of TV. And then I get addicted and I keep watching the movies. So, yeah, I'm busy, busy, busy. And I've got lots of plans for things which I can't reveal for when we finish. And it's one of those, again, I can't really say too much because we don't know what, when lockdown will finish. It was such a pleasure and a joy and an energy having you with us. I cannot wait for our next live where we're going to launch our competition. So I want to make sure that everybody stay tuned to see what we're about to do with Ryan Jenkins live from London. And uh, we are very grateful and thankful for your time here with us. Lovely. Thank you so much and I wish you all the love and I can't wait to come back live with you next time. So we will see you soon. Thank you so much, Ryan. Yeah, take care then, work it. Bye. <laughs> that was the top international choreographer, Ryan Jenkins, live from London, sharing his life and what he's been doing during the pandemic. We're gonna launch, launch a competition soon um, with you guys for a TikTok dance to do something creative together. We want to involve you while raising money to help people around the world, the doctors and the indigenous communities. So please, I want to remind you, your support is fundamental. Go donate to www.planetglease.com and to www.livehopefestival.com. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon live. Goodbye.